Hello, this is Mr. White, and this video is on the law of signs. So the little girl says, Trigonometry works great for right triangles and angles on the XY plane, but why can't we use trigonometry for non-right triangles? Well, don't worry, little girl. We're going to address that today. Uh, when you think back to the unit circle and in our travels in pre-calc this year, on the unit circle, we took the most basic trig that you learned back in geometry, just the Sokotoa and such and we extended that concept onto the XY plane and we allowed for various weird abstractions such as allowing um, triangle side lengths to be negative and uh, allowing angles to be negative and we dealt with radian measure and we allowed angles to be more than one full rotation. Um, so we really extended the, the trig concept in one direction but we're going to back off from that unit circle direction and we're going to uh, just for the moment, go back to the days where we just had shapes lying on a plane. We're not going to worry about the XY coordinate system for this lesson. And uh, we're going to extend trig in a different way. In this lesson, we're going to extend in a direction where we're not limited to right triangles anymore. So that's going to open up a lot of options for us. So let's just start with a picture of a non-right triangle. And you'll see the direction we're going here. So here's a it's intended to be a non-right triangle, and uh, we're going to follow a, a fairly common convention in math, in which um, even though we've gotten used to using Greek letters for angles, it's a, a different convention is to allow capital letters to represent vertices and or angles, and then allow have their opposing sides be lowercase letters. And please make sure you follow a convention where the lowercase letter is across from its corresponding uppercase letter. So I'll put a little bit of A, or a little A across from big A, I'll put a little B across from big B, and a little C across from, from big C. That's an important um, thing to acknowledge and, and to follow that convention in this uh, chapter. All right, um, I'm going to draw another line segment in there. Um, that's the altitude from B, but it's important to note that, that I could have just as well drawn the altitude from any of the three uh, vertices. And let's call that H. Okay, so let's build off of what we already know, which is right triangle trig. And I'm going to do this fairly quickly because this should be very uh, familiar to you by now. Just saying that sine of A equals H over C, and then saying that H equals C times sine of A. And we could similarly say that sine of big C equals uh, H over little a, and likewise uh, H equals little a sine big C, right? All right, well, move this up a little bit. So um, if little h equals both of those expressions that I um, have up there, then that means that these two expressions are equal, that um, little c sine big A equals little a sine big C. All right? And I'm going to divide both sides of that equation by A, C, A, C. And I'll cancel out what I can. C on the left side, numerator and denominator. A on the right side, numerator and denominator. And what I end up with is sine of big A over little a equals sine of big C over little c. And, again, I could have done that to any of the vertices. Uh, we, we did, uh, if I scroll back up, we dropped the altitude from um, vertex big B, and angle big B, but um, if I'd done it from one of the other uh, vertices, I'm going to trust that you'd believe me or be able to follow through and prove this on your own, that we find that those two ratios, uh, ratios also equal sine of big B over little b. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our law of signs. And its significance, again, is that this works not only on right triangles, but on every triangle. In fact, um, there's really no point in using this on right triangles because it would just yield our, our basic trig rules, which we already know. You really, this becomes powerful to use it on non-right triangles. And um, in, the little, in the picture I drew, I drew it as if the uh, triangle were an acute triangle where all three angles were less than 90 degrees. But we were found that even uh, um, it works on obtuse tri triangles. So works on all triangles on the Euclidean geometry plane. 
Now, I'm going to bring up some of the blasts from the past here. If you remember uh, from geometry, those congruence rules, ASA and SAA and such, we're going to find that the law of sines works on those two, the ASA case and the SAA case. Basically, um, the two cases where you have two angles. Now, I have a little asterisk next to the third case, the SSA, because you may remember that's the one, you know, where immature students giggle and they spell it backwards. Uh, in any case, it's, it, that's the one that isn't truly a congruence rule. Um, sometimes you might get congruent triangles, sometimes it might not. We'll address that one later. We're going to find that the law of signs actually does, can be applied, even if you can't guarantee congruence. More on that later. Uh, we're going to find there's another law called the law of cosines, which works on our two other congruence rules, SSS and SAS. And I just need to remind you that AAA guarantees similarity, but not congruence. And so we'll continue to discuss those concepts in class, but just be alerted that they are coming back. So let's jump into an example, and it's a familiar one. You've done this problem before, or at least you should have if you did your homework. Um, while hiking on a level path toward Colorado's front range, Otis Evans determines that the angle of elevation to the top of Long's Peak is 30 degrees. Moving 1,000 feet closer to the mountain, Otis determines the angle of elevation to be 35 degrees. So how much higher is the top of Long's Peak than where Otis is standing, than his current elevation? So remember that turned out to be a rather messy problem, um, algebraically. And we're going to address it again using the law of sines. And, and just to be forewarned, it may be one of those cases where you go, oh man, why don't you show us that way first? Well, to be clear, the other way is not a bad way, the way that we learn first. And it's good for your practice and be comfortable with your trade. But yes, you, you probably will find it this way. Law of signs makes it even easier. So let's say Otis is back here. We're not going to worry about his eyeball height and his angle of elevation started at 30 degrees. And then he gets closer by 1,000 feet, and all of a sudden the angle of elevation is 35 degrees. And so let's put all the necessary information on our sketch. We're going to assume here that the, ink, that the units are our feet. And I'm realizing I need to make that picture a little bit bigger because I need to add some extra information in there. So let's move this over here. All right. So here's the approach we're going to take now. Now, if you remember last time, we felt constrained to only work with right triangles. So we worked with this big right triangle and this one. And I made a big deal about how we couldn't work with that non-right triangle directly. Well, now with the law of sines, we can. And start by labeling this A, uh, B, and C. Doesn't really matter which letter you put where, as long as you make little a, little b, and little c across. And, and notice that, per my earlier point, we're dealing with an obtuse angle here. We're dealing with an obtuse triangle, where that angle, big B, is bigger than, um, than 20, I'm sorry, 90 degrees. So your first step is to fill in the angles, um, get the other angles. And based on that 35 degrees here, that is not our B value. Our B value is this angle. So that would make that 100 and uh, 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 45 degrees. Didn't write that real well, let me try that. 145 degrees. So big B, for the record on the side, is 145 degrees. We're even taking a step back from radians, right? We're, we're going to just work with degrees on this. And remember that rule in, in geometry that says that A plus B plus C, angle measures A plus B plus C must add to 180 degrees? Well, if we apply that, A was 30 degrees, B we just established is 145 degrees, and um, that means that C would bring us to, let's see, um, that's just uh, 5 degrees, isn't it? So big C equals 5 degrees. So getting the angles is uh, pretty straightforward. Now let's pause for a moment and think about what we're interested in finding here. We're interested ultimately in this height over here. It's not even related to that triangle, but let's make it our intermediate goal to find either this length, little b, or this length, little a. Um, I'm going to say it doesn't really terribly matter which one you find in the end, as you'll see, but let me uh, set up my law of signs. Sine of A over little a equals sine B 
of a little b equals sine dt of a little c. And plug in what we know. And we know all three angles, and we also know that little c equals a uh, thousand. So sine the one um, of let's see, a was 30 degrees equals sine of 145 degrees equals sine of 5 degrees over um, and C again is the side length that we know. We know that little c is a thousand feet. So let's consider um, that we want to find, let's say we want to find A. And again, I repeat, we could have found little b. That would also get us to our goal. We just have to pick one. And notice that this law of sines is really several equations in one. I could either say that this equals this and work with that as a single equation, or I could work with these two parts or these two parts. But since I said I want to deal with little a, I'm going to deal with that and that. Um, it's important to make sure that you first deal with the one ratio in which you know both the angle and its opposite side. And if I cross multiply those, if I cross multiply those, I would get sine 30 degrees times 1,000. So 1,000 times sine 30 degrees equals um, little a times sine of 5 degrees. I'm going a little bit fast here. Obviously, you should pause if you need a moment to let that soak in. But we're not far from getting to where we need to be. If I divide both sides by the sine of 5 degrees, I get little a equals 1,000 sine 30 degrees over sine 5 degrees. This is definitely one of those processes where you want to do all these on paper first before you grab the calculator. Um, just for kids, I'm going to grab the calculator at this point. Um, I don't really have to as far as uh, finding my ultimate goal of that mountain height, mountain range height. But in case you're curious, let's find that little a equals 1,000. 1,000 uh, times sine 30 degrees, sine 30 degrees, and then divided by sine 5 degrees. Let's just do it all at once. Sine 5 degrees. And we find that that is our A value. That is little a. Now, that wasn't our final question. Our final question was to find the height. So there we would use our basic right triangle trig. So law of science has done its job in our right triangle trig. Again, I'm going to do that fairly quickly since this should be fairly comfortable for you by now. I'm going to say that h equals little a sine of that 35 degrees. And again, turn your attention to this green triangle here, and that should become evident. And um, so I'll go back to my calculator and multiply our newly found a value times sine of 35 degrees times sine 35 degrees and that is our mountain range height so what do you think you like the law of sines um, again I don't I want to repeat our old method is not bad in fact I, I repeat I think it's good to practice the algebra but that is our height and units of feet. And of course, on paper, you would round this off to the appropriate number of sig figs. All right, uh, hope that made sense. I want to point out that this was the ASA case of triangles. So again, this is getting awfully messy here, but let me see if I can make that clear. We knew we start off at this angle, and then we had the adjacent, the side that was adjacent to it, and then we had the angle right next to that. That's how we started off, so that was uh, again, the ASA congruence case. And I uh, hope that makes sense. So here's your turn. Let's have you try this one. I'll let you read it. I, I have a little disclaimer at the end, which maybe wouldn't be included in, in um, every geometry book or every test I give, but sort of a little technicality. So let's see how you do. Pause the video, please. Uh, if you have trouble getting the picture, um, just getting the picture drawn, I will show the picture here in just a moment. But I ask that you try it on your own first. And if you need assistance, um, keep, keep playing, and I'll provide the picture at least.
All right, so if you want to just check, see if your picture matches mine. Um, I'll remind you that it doesn't matter if your letters are different than mine, as long as this basic structure and the location of each piece of information is, is um, the same. So once again, if you need to pause and try to finish off the problem at this point, please do so. Otherwise, in a moment, I'm going to show the, my solution. All right, here's my solution. Okay, um, I want to point out that this, unlike the example that I did, which was an ASA case, notice that this was an SAA case. A side, um, the angle right next to it, and then the next angle. So the law of signs works just as well there.